Here's one correct way to convert an image to black and white. We'll start with the wrong way. That's to open up the hue and saturation tab and just drop saturation to zero and click OK. You gain no new detail. It looks really flat. It, mi it mixes equal parts red, green, and blue, which are your three channels. You can see this, this, and this are all exactly the same, and they just darken a little bit when you combine them. So undo that. Much better way is to open the channel mixer. This gives you control over how much red, green, and blue you want. First step is to click monochrome. And you'll see the default is just to use the red channel. So this would be the same as, if I click cancel here, just looking at the red channel there. If I did 100% green and zero everything else, it would be just clicking on the green channel, and blue would be just the blue channel. Now you'll notice here, really quickly, that the blue channel has much darker freckles, whereas like red is fairly flat, and this has a lot more detail. In fact, this here would be almost a good option just by itself to convert to black and white, just to use the blue channel. But instead, we're going to add and subtract them ourselves using that channel mixer. So, sending red to, um, to zero because we don't want to base it on that flat red channel. Oopsie. Green up, a uh, blue up, which was which had all that detail in it, and green down, which will actually subtract that other channel, which also had some detail. Because red is really flat, up and down is just going to be increasing or decreasing brightness, which is similar to contrast, which almost looks more like a brightness slider to me. I can never quite figure out how to use it effectively, except I find usually a negative value is helpful. So, by basing an image like this, just on the green and blue channels, you'll often find that detail is greatly increased. Next step would be just to, for instance, get rid of the freckles you don't want, the ones that are too visible. Just go like that. See so if I can't get rid of that. That's not noticeable anymore. Um, there are better ways to do this, but one option, if you want to bring back color into objects like, for instance, these earrings, just to highlight them, is to use the History Stamp tool, shortcut Y, and then select by clicking on one of these, clicking in your history state that you want to go back to. In my case, it'll be right before the channel mixer, and just painting in that history state. So if I go back up to 100%, bring my brush size down a little bit, and carefully paint this back in. And then if I want, I can also go undo by using a later history state. Let's see. And it doesn't quite work, but not bad for a hack job. All done.